Hi guys, a couple of moon cycles ago I made a video demonstrating the moral standards of a Muslima, a female Muslim, who was quite happy to see a police officer in Australia, I think it was, go to jail for sexual assault, if I remember correctly. Now luckily, technology in the form of a dash cam recorded the event and showed a polite and correct gentleman telling a rude and belligerent woman what she had done wrong, what the dangers were and the consequences. The video shows very clearly that the deciding factor when it comes to human behavior is not the ideology or kind of God figure they worship, but at the end of the day it's the human being. And in this video I will highlight that it is not just an individual who can act immorally and in a disgusting, I think it's despicable way, inflicting punishment on others through lies and deception, but it can also be entire companies. Like, for example, a company based in the UK, A Thousand and One Inventions, which is such a company. They spread lies and mislead mostly children and mostly children in Muslim households at that. Now, children don't yet have protective filters to separate fiction from reality. They instinctively trust grown-ups, especially when in an environment where, you know, they can touch and experiment with different objects as though playing. And this curiosity is exploited by a thousand and one inventions, and the playful yet educational environment is then associated with Islam, causing a false correlation between Islam and scientific development. Everyone remotely familiar with Islam and Islamic texts will know that the Quran only propagates knowledge of the Quran, nothing outside of it. The Quran consistently reinforces this by telling believers to reflect, ponder and evaluate the Quran, and only the Quran, and even advises followers to not even think about anything which might make them doubt their 7th century belief and ideology. As a result, we have a situation in 2015 which sees, well, out of something like a thousand laureates, only a single, in, in words one, scientific Nobel Prize having been awarded to a Muslim, a man living and working in the US in 1999. And we have over 50% of the entire Muslim population being illiterate, without any education, at all, nothing. And that is the reality we face today. Now enter 1001 Inventions, the company. Instead of educating people and providing basic reading classes for people, they simply make Muslims feel better about their lack of education by telling them that a thousand years ago, Muslims were at the forefront of technology and scientific development. They tell people that Islam was the driver which enabled Muslims to make sensational and groundbreaking inventions and discoveries, making colossal contributions to mankind. And they come up with the most incredible claims and statements, which, I mean, if, if true, would indeed be sensational. And they do this so well that even well-known scientists like Jim Al-Khalili was, was duped and repeated the claims, as did countless journalists, notable politicians and even heads of state. So they get full marks for their marketing, that's for sure. But what is important for me, is this true? Did Muslims really make these humongous discoveries and inventions? Was this really the foundation on which the, I don't know, Italian and French revolution were based and which enabled the Age of Enlightenment? Sadly, no. I've shown bit by bit and using one example after the other how the deception works and what the reality behind the claims is. And I'm not the only one. Others have also noticed it and have exposed their blatant lies. But 1001 inventions have done what most dishonest Muslims do, apply censorship and use lies to shut people like me up. They're afraid of the truth. Now, instead of initiating a civilized conversation, they use the club, just like cavemen used to do. It's primitive and shows their weakness. It's, what is strange is that they have they've toned down their claims over the last year or a couple of months. 
They're talking about Muslims now being involved in advancing, providing input, when previously they blatantly lied and said Muslim X invented this and that, even if it wasn't even a Muslim. So now, but why now go after me? Why try and shut me down for telling the truth? I mean, they're exploiting the system and abusing it. Now, Google is not interested in copyright tangles and will first punish and restrict someone and then see if this is justified. So sh shoot first, ask later. <laughs> so if I, if I go down, does that in any way make a dent in their income? No, so they don't care. And if, if they need resources to handle me and my videos, it's not worth it for them. It's, a, it's only free speech and who cares? After reinstating my Iran video, for example, and they did this a few times, they probably got tired of it and simply agreed with the bullies and are telling me if the YouTube community flags my video as having false commercial spam, then there must be false commercial spam, even if there is not. Now, if a company makes a copyright claim, they must, they must have the rights. And according to Google, th this must be the case. But this is being abused by Muslims who make false claims for anything from the recitation to a sentence from the Quran to a few seconds of a video. Now, in my Thousand and One Lies video, I took 20 seconds from their introductory video to show what I am commenting on, what I am criticizing and what I am talking about. So my video runs for something like a thousand five hundred seconds and their excerpt I'm using is 20 seconds long. Which is why there's a section in the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act in the, in the US, which allows the usage of copyrighted material for educational purposes, which contains transformative information not infringing on the target audience of the critiqued material, which is non-commercial, uses only the minimum required material and does not infringe on any copyright laws and thus does not require any permission from anyone. That's why it's called fair use. And it allows news to be reported about something without infringing the copyright laws. And that is what I was doing. But hang on, was the clip I used protected by any copyright limitations? No, it was not. Now, Thousand and One Inventions are such incompetent fools and are outright stupid. Because the clips and pictures I used were freely available on their site for what they called public and media use. You know, like for the press. Being the sly, dishonest Muslims they are, they have received my counterclaim where I pointed this out and have reacted. How, you ask? <laughs> By deleting the download buttons. But they're stupid, because anyone can load the cached versions and see what they've done. Here you can see the version that I found until two days ago, and this is what it says now. I mean, in the older version, you can still see that these clips and pictures were freely available and for public use. And that is exactly what I did. So where's my copyright infringement? <laughs> In addition, it's just a few seconds, so I would be within the fair use anyway. So their claim against copyright is illegal. I mean, it, will Google now shut down their channel for filing illegal DMCA claims? <laughs> no, of course not. And to make matters worse, they really are like children. And they I mean, this is incomprehensible for me, how a, a company can be, I mean, they are successful, I, I, please, they are. But how can they be so, like children are so stupid because they filed a second copyright infringement for using their brand name. <laughs> Come on, using a brand name, really? It shows how money can't buy you a brain. Now, what, what they've done is they've registered their brand logo and name, Thousand Inventions, and this makes it a registered trademark, just like, like any company, like, like McDonald's has. What, what exactly does that mean? Well, it has commercial implications. I can't open a company and trade under the name of McDonald's. And I can't sell objects with their logo on it. I can't trade, you know, in their name. So, but do I, do I need to delete every video I make as a tourist in every city their logo appears? <laughs> no, of course not. I just can't commercially exploit their name or logo. And that is why it's registered and protected. 
Now, since my YouTube channel is not representative or anything of a commercial company, and I don't sell anything or commercially trade anything using any brand name, this claim by 1001 Inventions is laughable. But again, Google doesn't care, doesn't check, and follows any illegal claim, declares me guilty until proven innocent, and does not require 1001 Inventions to provide any evidence for their claim. Instead, I get message after message telling me all sorts of things. And the worst, I mean, they, they switch languages midway because they can't comprehend that a person does not automatically acquire a foreign language after clearing immigration control at the airport when you enter, when you, when you enter a different country. It's tedious, frustrating, and a, and a time killer. And all because Muslims are trying to feel better about their ideology and use lies to do so. Oh goodness, thanks for your time.